I kept in touch with Bon over the next five years, but, but of course the relationship and the nature of the relationship changed because we were no longer living together. I mean, what people forget is that from 1965-66 until 1974, um, Bon and I, 75, Bon and I ha had a fairly intimate relationship in that. We lived within each other's living quarters, both as teens and, you know, or post, immediate post-teens and as young men. Um, when he went to Adelaide, you know, when he was recuperating, um, all those periods of time. So our relationship took on a completely different form when he left with the band because um, he was on the road. Um, I was into a completely different lifestyle and, and life, you know, being married, having a child, uh, and Bon wasn't. And he uh, took off on his dream uh, closer than ever before of becoming what he'd always wanted to be, which was, you know, a global rock and roll star. Although star, I'm, I'm not sure about the word star, but certainly um, a major rock and roll force. Um, I think he was a reluctant star. Uh, and we, I saw, of course, ACDC's progress. Um, I was in the music business and um, I followed his career rather than ACDC's career and saw him selling records. And, you know, Bon often in letters would say to me, well, it's fantastic because I'm going to get this amount of money and I'm going to buy a car and I'm even thinking of buying some property, I can remember him saying, in Perth um, uh, for his mum and dad at one stage. And, um, and he was excited about the money that was coming in or the money that was in the pipeline. Um, and telling me about the contract he'd signed, the record contract with Atlantic Records in America, and he was excited about all of those things because they were signs of him making the big time. Uh, and he was excited about it. He wasn't nonchalant at all. He was very excited, uh, like a kid in a candy shop. He was, um, you know, his dream was actually coming true. This was no longer the Valentines in squally pubs in Melbourne. Um, or fraternity stuck in a farm up in Allgate. This was the real deal. This was a touring band who didn't stop touring for the entire time that he was there. For the five years until his death, they toured. They had very little time off. And um, uh, ACDC had a very strong working class ethic. And their working class ethic was that they were on the road to Ghana fans around the world and they believed, and rightly so, the only way they would do it is by live performances um, because they were, you know, a fucking good rock and roll band. End of story. Uh, and they were a perfect combo. I mean, Bond complimented them, his experience, Sean. Um, I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that ACDC, particularly Malcolm and Angus, learnt a lot uh, from Bond um, in terms of working a crowd, in terms of lyric writing. Um, uh, for my mind, Bon Scott is one of the great rock and roll lyric writers. Um, he wrote poetry from the street. Um, it wasn't pretty, uh, but it was real. It was working class uh, in its uh, form, in its format, um, and um, in its delivery. And uh, it reached the common denominator. We could all relate to Bon Scott. Yes, some of it was a bit lurid, um, but the other thing about Bond's writing as a lyricist was he had a unique sense of humour. You know, he had an edge of comedy um, to his lyrics. And um, they were all about relationships, but they weren't all about lovey-dovey, I love you, you love me relationships that were, um, that were radio fodder. They, this was the real deal. This is what we all talked about. This is how we talked. This is how the people who bought ACDC records talked. They related to Bond's words. Yes, they related to the music. Um, but it's Bond's lyrics that, was the, that has been, as time has proven, um, has been uh, the longevity of early ACDC, uh, more so than their music. And, um, uh, and I thought they were a perfect combo. Um, there is uh, a handful of the best guitarists in the world, and Angus is in that handful. Um, there's two or three great, great rhythm, rock and roll rhythm guitar players in the world. Um, um, one being Chuck Berry, Keith Richard and Malcolm Young. Um, Malcolm Young's an underrated uh, rock and roll rhythm player in my view. Um, but the three of those, and of course, AC, not to take away from the rhythm section, ACDC's rhythm section was a fantastic rhythm section, uh, the original rhythm section um, that, that toured America. 
Um, and after that there was Journeyman as the rhythm section. Um, but after that the uh, image was set in concrete. Um, and uh, and the, the people who kept those shows alive were Malcolm, Angus and Bon. Uh, and Bon complimented them. Um, uh, bon would, uh, you know, instigate the stage persona of the band by putting um, Angus while he's playing lead guitar on his shoulders and rocking around a hall. Bon um, uh, was confident enough to be able to do that. He knew he could do that. And, uh, and, and Malcolm was rock steady, always rock steady, keeping the thing going, keeping the rhythm going while these two uh, were showmen. And they complemented each other perfectly and they fitted like a glove. Um, and it was much better than I'd ever envisaged. I always envisaged they could gel together, but this superseded it. And I watched, we watched, we all did. We watched his progress as he went along. And, um, uh, but everyone was also, you know, there was always a slight edge of worry about Bond because um, he was a hard drinker, he, was a, he, he lived hard. Uh, and the more on the road, as anybody who knows who goes on the road, it's a hard life. And um, the one way of seeking um, relief from that hard road is booze and drugs. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's a cliche, um, but it's a cliche because it's true. Um, in those early days of making success and touring non-stop, um, uh, life gets tough and you get bored. And he was a hard drinker and a hard liver. And there was always an element of um, worry as to whether or not Bond was going to get through. He was, you know, he was one of those people who you thought one day uh, you might read about dying on the road. Um, just like, you know, a lot of the greats, just like Hendrix, just like Jim Morrison and, you know, now a catalogue of others.